listening to Dad Crossing, a podcast about animals and parenting. Today, we chat about the details of the new update, and there's a lot to chat about. Does Nintendo grow with us, or is it that inner child we all love to have? And we share our feelings on Apex Legends. Hey, Sean, give me a well, well. Well, well. So how are you doing this fine, well, morning for, well, morning for both of us, really. How, are, how is our morning going, Sean? Uh, mine's going well. I've got coffee. Um, it's had a small issue with the internet, but I think I'm now pinging off my phone for mobile data. So hopefully that shouldn't drop out in the middle of recording. So uh, but other than that, I'm fine. Can't wait for daylight savings in the UK to catch up with daylight savings in America. But, Amen. Yeah. It's a sacrifice, a small sacrifice I make to carry on with this lovely, lovely podcast. And we appreciate your commitment. We really do. I'm doing good as well. I have tea. I have iced tea. There is a long conversation, actually not in in the dad crossing. I think it was actually Animal Crossing. There is a long conversation in the Animal Crossing channel about iced tea, southern iced tea in America and northern iced tea, Long Island iced tea. Do you guys drink iced tea at all? Or do you just not um, understand why us Americans would do something ridiculous like that? Yeah, I've got, we've got iced tea. I mean, we, it, oh, it's, we don't really make it, but we've got it on the shelves and stuff in supermarkets. I like it in the summer. Yeah. So it's a nice... Something it to go runs, to in the summer. It runs through my veins. It is the only thing... I drink except for an occasional like Coke Zero. Other than that, Ugh. it's all iced tea and maybe a dabble of water. I'm like the most hypocritical dad in the world. I'm like, kids, drink your water. <laughs> and then I pour myself a gigantic cup of iced tea and call it a day. <laughs> but other than that, man, I'm I'm doing pretty good. So what have you been playing? I have be playing Bowser's Fury. As I said in the last podcast, I was kind of upset that I thought I'd lost my save for whatever reason. But um, when I fired the game up, I fired it up on my daughter's save on the Switch. So it loaded up as if there was no save data because there was no save data for her. Um, and I think I only noticed when I went to go and launch Animal Crossing and it asked me if I wanted to launch it as, as Jaya rather than myself. And I was like, I bet I did that for Mario. So I went back and checked, and yes, it's all there. So I've been playing Bowser's Fury. I'm on to the third and final world, I believe. Okay. Or how many, of the map. How many cat shines do you have so far? Um, I've 100 percented both the first and second world. So 46. Two, I think. I thought. Oh, okay. All right. So I don't so, know. Have you? Do you know what's coming? Have you? Have you been spoiled by the internet? Nope. I have okay. kept it. The, yeah, I've kept it. Like not trying to look at anything. Not, I know that you can finish the game on fifty. I saw that with Jesse said that, mm-hmm. but that, that's as much as I know. So, but I'm trying to. I'm trying to hundred percent each one as I go because. I'm really enjoying it. I enjoy the open world style. So apart from this new world is frustratingly difficult. I have for the first time died. <laughs> oh yeah. Where where um, are you at? Like what world are you playing? That that rotating the rotating one above the lava. Oh, oh yeah. Wow. I wonder if you can go about it however you want. Because I feel like that's the last world I did. Ah uh, yeah. But- I I was Swimming around on the back of um, what's the Plessy? Plessy, yeah. yeah. Um, and that's the first one I came across after I finished swimming around. I was trying to get back on the original where you first start the game. I was trying to get back onto there, but I don't think you can yet until the end. Yeah, I don't, I don't, but yeah, I I know that the lava world was the last one I did when I hundred when I hundred percented it. So yeah, that's. Uh... That's interesting, but I guess that's the cool thing about it being open world. It'll it'll look different for everybody in that sense. So yeah. So play that. Um, uh, last week, any opportunity that I got to play Warzone, I took. 
Um, I'm trying to go for the my Twitch affiliate, so I need 19 more followers. I need to stream on one other day. I've hit the eight hours that it tells me to do. I think I've done 12 hours of streaming. So yeah, it gives you a list of targets to meet. Um, mm-hmm. So I've got a couple of those, yeah. So if you're listening to this and you haven't been across to my Twitch <laughs> channel, which is... Uh, Sean W. Abbott, please do and follow because I need your help. <laughs> yeah, man, for sure. I'm, um, I'm I'm actually going there right now. I think I follow you though, but I don't really know. Oh, yeah, yeah, you I do. do, and Tim does. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh... yeah, so what does it mean it. when? So I wake up in the morning, which for you is like ten o'clock usually when I wake up, uh, nine ten o'clock. Um. And it says Sean Wabbit has jumped into BR. What does BR stand for? Battle Royale. Which so oh, now you're playing. Okay. Now you're playing Apex Legends. Um, you'll know Battle Royale. It's just last man standing or the last team. Yeah, standing, yeah, yeah, depending yeah, yeah. On how you play. So, but yeah, the 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 requirements for the path to affiliate. Um, I need to reach 50 followers, stream for eight hours, stream on seven different days, and an average of three viewers. So my average of my viewer average is one <laughs> at the moment. So yeah, I need to maybe hit the 50 followers and then maybe use Discord and be like, look, I need everybody just to, even if you just look at it and put your phone down or right. close your, yeah. and just, if you're not interested in Watson, at least just watch for an hour, please. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah. Is that the time next. frame you have to watch? Like, you have to watch for an hour? Like, how does that work? Do you know? Uh, no, it's just... It's how usually how long I stream for. It's about an hour to two hours because uh, I can play a lot of different matches in one hour, depending on how good the day is. Sure, yeah, that makes so, sense. Yeah, so yeah, I'm, I'm going for that. I'll be streaming... Let's see, this goes out on Saturday, which I probably won't be streaming at all over the from Saturday. But as of today, when we're recording it Tuesday, I'm going to jump on layer and uh, I've got some household chores to do. Go to get that dad life out of the way first. Yeah. And then, and then I'll be playing a little bit of Wazoo. So nice. Uh, the, other, the other two games I've been playing, uh, what I've mentioned before, is a game called Pipe BMX. Um, I just launched that to see if they've done anything with the physics because that's why I absolutely hated the physics of that game. Um, but they haven't, so it's still as lumpy and horrible to play. So that like lasted all of about 10 minutes. So uh, what don't the you last like game, about the physics? Um, it's, it's too realistic. It's hard to... Oh, is that the one where each go. like like th- like button controls a like a foot or a hand or whatever? Yeah, so you've got buttons that control your feet, buttons that control your hands, and you've got to control the bike, control your player. It's just there's too much going on. So yeah, I'm out. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. A lot to think about. Um, and the last one I've been playing, and because it's the Xbox free games with gold, is Metal Slug Free. Um, it's one of my favorite arcade games to play if I ever see it. I always try and get a quick game as I'm passing. Um, so, yeah. Which everybody I think. Fill me in. I've never played it. Ah, so it's a 2D side scrolling. Um, it's like, a, I mean, I imagine it's like a shooter. Like a yeah, is it? Shooting thing. Yeah, basically that's it. You, and it's mayhem. There's loads going on. And right. everything's. Right. Yeah. So. But yeah, it's I free see- to play. It's, yeah, that's cool. I saw it on the on the thing. I may download it just to just to give it a shot on the games with gold. Um, so that's cool. Yeah, my son what has myself? Crayola Scoot. Going back to the pipe BMX, and that's like all I can handle. And it's like it's like baby baby level entry. And I still sometimes like like gotta you gotta rotate the stick or press a button or whatever, and I get super confused. So the, the skateboarding ones aren't too bad because you've got one stick controls like your left foot the other stick controls the right foot or oh, you've got it where it controls one controls the board one controls the, the body which is fine this one you've got like your bumper buttons 
control your hands. Your trigger buttons control your feet. And if you want to jump the bike, rotate the player and the bike and take your foot off. And yeah, no, it's too much. <laughs> yeah, man, that's that's just nuts. There's no way. I can and, keep and the tutorial for it is pretty, pretty rubbish. So... Oh, that's even worse. That's a really tough game with a bad tutorial. Oh, no. <laughs> that's no good. Well, that's pretty much it for me. Uh, what about yourself? Yeah, so I have um, kind of all over the board. But in the in the last episode, well, two episodes ago when our listeners are hearing this, um, Marty was pretty salty on Balan of Wonderland or Balan's Wonderland. And so he was like, this game is just... We had the Square Enix like present thing, and he was like, it, "He was like, this game is horrible. I don't know why everybody's all about it." And blah, blah blah. And I was like, "Oh, I don't know." I was like, "I actually was kind of interested in it." So, so I downloaded the demo just to see, you know, just to see if he was just being salty, Marty, or uh, if there was something to it. And unfortunately, he's not wrong. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> I played a level of this game, and there's a lot of stuff to collect. The I don't know, your character doesn't feel very life. It doesn't have your character doesn't have a lot of life. I guess is the best way to say it. Um, you, all your your total controls are moving with the stick, and then you have one action button. Which, if you don't have a costume on, all your action button does is jump. There's no like wall jump, double jump. There's not like Mario where there's all these different types of ways to interact with your character. It's just like jump. And then you get a costume, and then your costume has an ability. So it might be shoot or jump tall or have like a like a peach float to it or something like that and and to help you get to different areas and in that sense it's almost um in each level a little metroidvania like because you might get a costume and that might make you make you need to go back or it might make you think oh i can go back and get that trophy or those like coins i think they're more like gems but whatever um whatever it was that you couldn't get before because you couldn't reach it so it has a little bit of that in it and it's not bad, but like, I don't know. I just wasn't feeling it. They're just, it, they just lacked life to me. And the story is very convoluted. Um, it could use some voiceover, in my opinion. Um, I don't know. I just, there was just a lot that I was just kind of like, it was just a lot of small cuts that made me not really love it. And then I showed it to Noah because I, in the, in the presents, maybe we knew before, but I didn't know before that it was a two player game. And so I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. But the problem is you're in this 3D space and you it's kind of like uh, Captain Toad where you can or yeah, Cap Toad's treasure tracker or whatever it is, where both of you can control the camera. And so it's just an utter nightmare of like like you're running and then all of a sudden like Noah will will change the camera on me and I'm like, ah, so it's not like a split screen. You share the same screen and you fight for con camera controls and it's just not a fun way to play a co-op game like not not at all because i'm just like no don't turn the camera and then like noah runs off the edge because i have control of the camera and i move it to be in front of me and then it's just like it was just it just wasn't fun it needs to be a split screen or something like that in some way to work better than the way it does so that's bound in wonderland um I'm just I, quickly watching the video now. Yeah, go talking ahead. about it. And oh yeah, it looks it looks like it should be a lot of fun. I mean, the the worlds look like really insane, especially that like 3D one with all the stairs, the black and white one. But, yeah, I'll be honest. I only made it three levels in. That's all I've done. So you know, I just played the demo. Uh, the demo has told me that I'm not going to spend sixty dollars on this game. I will tell you that Noah thinks it's neat. He's like, I really like it, Dad. I'd play it. And I was like, well, I may buy it since he likes it, but not until it hits a sale. I didn't see enough there. Yeah. Um, I might give that a try. Yeah. So download the demo and tell me if you think I'm utterly crazy uh, or if you agree <laughs> with me. Agree with me and Marty or not. Um, maybe maybe Marty's saltiness just war is, uh, is, is wearing off on me. I don't know. Um, what comes after is a is a very in-depth, fun, uh, I guess they're called the Walking Sims. I don't know. It seems like a dumb name to me, but whatever. Um, 
it only takes about an hour and a half to finish. You're this you're this girl that gets on a um, that gets on a train. By the way, it's the first uh, pandemic era game that I've played. Your character wears a mask when she gets on the train. So that was like I was like, oh well, I should have figured that was coming. Um, and so you get on this train and you you start talking to people and you can listen to their conversations. You fall asleep. You wake up and like you you are on the wrong train. You got on the train like the train of death, basically. Except all and the, the train is now full of ghosts, except these ghosts are very nice. They're all trying to come to grips with like how they died and why they died and what maybe they didn't do in their life. And it's basically a story. She has contemplated suicide. And so it's basically a story about like what she what she, why she did that, that she has worth, that um, you know, uh that that Pete what she does in life in life matters um and that she can she can change she has the ability to help other people and so it's just it's just an uplifting story like i said you can you can beat it it's not really beating it there literally is no way to die you're just walking through this train having conversations with ghosts and it's uh i think i called it i think i said in my review it's like a fire hose of thinking conversations for an hour and a half like you'll talk to a baby who died before it had you know had any ability to grow up and like he has the ability to talk to you you talk to dogs who had bad owners talk to dogs who had good owners who wish they could go back to them you talk to old uh, old, older people like an old man who wishes he could go back to see his wife um yeah you just talk to all different kinds of people and all the conversations make you think and you're still thinking about the last conversation when you've moved on to the next one and you're like ah and so um if you like that kind of a game i recommend you give it a shot because it's uh it's a it's definitely a thinker and it deals with some some really important topics but as i said in my review and it says right at the beginning there are it does talk about suicide and things like that so if that stuff's trigger for you then uh stay away from it yeah i uh, just i quickly look through the video it's something something that maybe jay or like she likes uh, life is strange stuff like that so yeah it's something that she'd probably enjoy yeah it's a it's a cool hour and a half quick quick game uh raiders of the lost island um <laughs> this game so for it's a co- couch co-op game it's a couch co-op and that's uh for those most of you who can't see that is i did i did air quotes because it's it's semi co-op it's semi competitive so you're throwing on this island and the there's this boat that needs to be built but at the same time you need you want to collect all the treasure you can you personally out of the four of you and so you got to get these resource like bags and build the boat as a group while at the same time collecting treasure for yourself, you can push people off cliffs. You can shoot your friends if you want to. But the but the catch to the whole thing is if you do that, then if you do that too much, then when the rain starts coming and it will start coming and you don't know how to swim, um, your island will flood and you will all die if you all played around too much and didn't build the boat. So it's a really fun game of like, it's fun to push your friend off the edge when you know he has caught all when he's collected a bunch of diamonds and gold. But also, like if you do that, that might be the thing that kills you if if you you spend too much time doing that and not collecting bags for the boat to build it. So it's a very fun like couch co op type game. I will say, my only issue with it really is that I think it's too tough. Like you don't get enough time to play around because that's the fun of this game. Like the fun of the game is like like pushing your friend off the cliff and doing stuff like that. But it's too tough to where like when it was three of us playing and we were doing that and dying, we were like, okay, okay, we're goofing off too much. Now we're really going to play. Well, the problem was when we were really playing, like we weren't even pushing each other off the cliff. We were trying to help each other. We still were like, we were still dying on the island because it was flooding because we couldn't build the boat in time. So that's uh that's an issue that i have with with that game last game and then i will be done i started last friday to play squadrons star wars squadrons rogue squadrons or whatever it's, i don't know what it's called anyways the 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 star wars the star wars flying game which i was super excited for and for like 
the tutorial, I had a great time. <laughs> and I, I don't know what, I don't know why this is an issue. Cause it's not like it's a brand new game. It's not like I'm dealing with like first adopter problems here. This game has been out since like October of last year. And so I get to the second, I get to the first level. I'm out of the tutorial. I get to the first level. I'm like, I, I, I'm thinking I'm going to be playing this game all day because I'm really sucked in. And so I take off and it's like, the lady's like, follow me. I can't remember. I think her name is Grace. Grace is like, follow me. And I'm like, okay. And so I'm following her. I'm following her. And I'm like, this is weird. Like, why is nothing happening? And so, and then after a while, she just starts flying in circles around me. And I'm like, oh, okay, there's obviously an issue. So I restart the level. And then she's like, she does the whole thing again. And I find what I, and she like leads me to the right thing this time. And I'm like, okay, great. So I do what I'm supposed to do. And then the other guy's like, follow me. Well, guess what? That happens again. He's like, he just starts flying in circles around me. And I'm like, what is going on? So I look it up and sure enough, it's a bug. And so I restart the level a, a second time or a third time. Yep, still happens. And so I look further into it and it's like, well, sometimes if you restart the game and go back in, it might work this time it might work this time but if that happens you might have to do that on multiple levels and i'm like no i'm like i'm i'm not gonna do this it's not happening yeah that would kill a game for me <laughs> yeah but it's such a bummer because it is a lot of fun like i was it, i mean the flying feels so good the mechanics are fun it's got a cool like resource management system where you do you want all the power to go to your engines or to your shields or to your weapons or you can kind of balance them out i mean and you it's got a really cool throttle oh man i was having so much fun with it it just really it really bums me out i will probably periodically as long as it's on game pass i will probably periodically like just kind of load it back up and see if they fix these issues because oh it feels so good to play it really does so the last the last Star Wars game I played for flying was X Wing versus Tie Fighter, which I think was on the PC, nineteen ninety five. So yeah, I haven't played Star Wars games for me are very hit and miss. They're either going to be fantastic or they're just I yeah. Play. I I played Jedi Fallen Order for a little bit. And I know John and I had been going back and forth with this. And I think John summed it up best in, in his Dads After Dark, where I think he said it was a game that just didn't have much of a soul. And and maybe that's that falls on the fact that I'm not a big Star Wars player. I'm a like fan. You know, I mean, I don't mind them, but they're more entertainment to me than like I don't I don't dig deep into the lore. And so it just didn't do anything for me. Like, so I just kind of fell off of it. I was like, oh, I'll just play something else because, you know, it's a Game Pass game. And so I don't feel like I'm losing anything. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I'm not a Star Wars fan. Uh, the only well, the only film I like is the one that's got the pod racing in, and I literally will watch to the f- end of the pod racing, and then that's it. I'm done with the film. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you like legit don't like them? Like, I mean, I like them for entertainment. I'll watch them all for entertainment. I but... like, I like the, some of the comedy value. So, like Jar Jar Binks, absolutely yeah, yeah. crippled me. Uh-huh. I thought he was a. So I have watched the films, but I am one of those people that's like, on May the fifth, I will sit there and um, yeah. Like, sorry, no, I do. Um, oh, Revenge of the like, on the days that people celebrate Star Wars, I won't go. Right, right. It's like right, May fourth. So. May the fourth be that's, with you. Yeah, yeah. That's the one. yeah. Because yeah, May fifth is Revenge of the fifth. Isn't it? That's people, yeah. I have no idea. Yeah, see, we're both the same way, or we're we're similar. At least I'll say that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I like watching them, but I'm not gonna like. I'm not gonna remember what happened in the first movie, like, and how that how that links back to the one I'm watching right now. Like, that can happen. I don't. Know. No, but I I'm that way that with, with all those things. Yeah, I'm I'm only like that with one set of films, and that's the Marvels series. So. <laughs> yeah. See, I was just about to mention that. Like, I'm that way with all of them. Like, I don't I don't know why. I don't know how all those Marvels link together and the U-verse and all that. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. I love watching them. I think they're great entertainment, but my brain cannot keep it all together to make a story out of it. Kudos for you. Well, yeah. we have an absolute ton 
to talk about with the animals in our lives. So let's hear what Isabel's got to say for her morning announcements. Okay, well, we are in for some Animal Crossing update. Another free one, Sean. We thought maybe we'd be paying for this baby, but nope, it's still free. So uh, let me just get it out of the way, okay? Like the last cast we had, I said, I want a quality of life update that includes extra design slots. And my life is now complete. Like, I don't even know what happened after that. They announced extra designs. They they must listen to our podcast. That's all I can say, (laughs) because we we talk about stuff and then Nintendo go and chuck it in. So that's it, man. You're totally right. Like they, like I read this in the little twitter announcement that links you to a website which is ridiculous that that's how they did all this and they've yet to release a video or anything but whatever nintendo be nintendo um and i was like my life is complete i have my extra design slots i wish i could have had them earlier because i could still have like a soccer field and a basketball court and a football field um or a football field and a football field however you want to look at that um (laughs) (laughs) um um, but that's fine i had to blow all those away so that i could make toad town but i can still bring them back and i am so excited to have these design slots they are so needed and i feel great about it very excited i suppose then with like the other information of different things that you can get which we'll talk about that you need those slots now because oh yeah yeah you can (laughs) there's a lot to go you can now design on an umbrella, a, fl- a fan, a flag, and cutouts. I have not done this yet, but I really want to do something cool with one of these cutouts. Yeah. Off, the dinner, off, the, off the dinner table that we were at, and Tim told me about a Instagram account to follow. So I now follow that, and some of the cutouts, you can do like this Hello Kitty ones. There's People have like made Mario ones. It's, it's awesome. And... Yeah, it's quite some of the pictures that I've seen people posted and stuff like that is hilarious of like them using the taking a picture remote of the person stood behind the. So, yeah, it's it's a good way to interact. Yeah, people are amazing at the stuff they can do. And I I'm just really excited that Nintendo has given us the ability to do that. Um, You can also get the design portal on your Nook phone now, so you don't have to wait for it ables to be open or to to even go through that chat system not the chat system but go through the text of talking to abel and being like can i do this and yes you can and there you go so it makes it a lot quicker to be able to get your stuff get your designs on the portal get your designs off the portal so (laughs) yeah kudos to nintendo we've been talking about that there's certainly still a lot of stuff that that they could do to make to make quality of life easier for animal crossing but that's a big one and they keep tackling one after another so I don't know. I can't wait to see what's next. We did the, we got the storage that everybody wanted. Now we've got uh, extra design slots, and they've made it easier with more stuff. And I'm, I'm in. I'm in for whatever's next. Just, just say what you want next. And it's say true, what right? Next. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'll tell you what I want next. Here's what I want next. I want for when I go to Abel's one, two things. One on Abel's. One to be able to purchase multiple items from the from the dressing room which everybody in the world wants but not only that i want to be able to know what is in my storage at the moment that would make my life so and 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 that also goes for nook shopping too so like when i go to nook shopping or i go to abel's i want to be able to be like oh i have two of those in my storage already so i don't need to buy one great thanks for letting me know that I would have be this variation of it. So yeah, yeah, that would be that would be fantastic. Because now you know what I do. I go into Abel's and I'm like, this looks good. This looks good. This looks good. And then about once every two or three weeks, I go through my storage and then just take out all the doubles and sell them to Nooks. Because I'm like, <laughs> oh, I didn't know I had that, so I bought it. So here we go. So that's what I want next, Nintendo. Make it happen. Island tours. I have, oh, oh, wait, this is actually out today. Well, not today if you're listening because you're listening. So it was actually out as of Tuesday 
which was about four days ago. Um, so <laughs> yet again, the podcast about time and that's right. time differences and yeah. time travel. Yeah, let's, and... <laughs> jump, let's jump in the time machine. So it's out today. And man, it's awesome. Isn't it, Sean? You played with it. We liked it. It was great. No, I'm just kidding. We haven't yet actually got to play with it. So we don't know. But um, because we we uh, we record on uh, Tuesday morning, by the way. So that's why we're goofing off about this. Um, but I can't wait to see it. I, uh, till what, yeah. so it's out, it's out as of today, and, but Nintendo has said it's a limited time thing. Like it's not going to be out forever because, well, Nintendo likes to ruin fun. So I don't know. Why do you think they're doing that? Um, I'm not sure. I haven't looked entirely as to what the Island tour stuff is. So I'm very quickly doing that now. I've kind of lived under a rock the last week, so you have to bear with me. So you have um, to work and you you have a you have a you have like a debt you're yeah, a dad and you have just, a life, huh? Huh. It's, yeah, it's it's life gets in the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Life and wife and dad and father and all that fun stuff. So what it looks like, because I don't know either other than the one picture, because let's not forget that the only thing they've given us is a tweet and a web page to scroll down. That's it. Um, it looks like you can take like four pictures and frame them in one larger picture. I feel like somebody's going to make fun of me for this description, but that's the best I can do. You can put four because pictures you, in one larger picture a, and frame them. You can make a, a postcard. The On the Nintendo website, which you very kindly gave me the link to last night while I was trying to figure out what was going on <laughs> with it and thinking of, Crap! And it, I need to do this quickly because we're doing a podcast about it in the moment. Uh, a new way to share your island with the world is on the way. The new island tour career launches on March 23rd, which is today of recording, and is a limited time web service currently planned to be available until the end of this year that lets you use screenshots and footage ca- captured in Animal Crossing New Horizons to create a poster and trailer for your island. Share your favorite spots on your island. Uh, come here it's sentimental scenes to show off what makes your personal island so special find out more in the information on the official animal crossing twitter so yes basically you can make really nice postcards so any, any so, screenshots any screenshots you've taken and these are, i think mean, these are ones that have taken in the past mm-hmm. and like video snapshots are so the 30 second video snapshots you can use it looks like you can then use them online on on the web so you download them to your phone with the nice little qr code system that mm-hmm. the switch has now got which i think is amazing by the way it is it's great um and then upload them to this website and it'll give you a fancy nice looking postcard style i'm gonna make a bold prediction now that i know i missed that part so thank you i missed the part that it was to the end of this year i didn't think we knew I'm going to make a bold prediction that they are saying that because they have bigger plans for this that don't involve the web that either somehow one involve in software in animal crossing, or they have a plan for an operating system software to do this in like to do this on the, uh, on the switch. Or they're thinking about it. Maybe that's the other thing. Maybe they want to see how many people use this this particular web service to see if they want to somehow integrate it into the Switch in some way. That's my thought. Because I don't see why they get rid of this any other reason. No, I can't see why. So I'm now currently looking for the official animal crossing new horizons twitter page which strangely you think i'd be following but i'm not you're not well to be fair i don't know if they released much more information than what you just read so i'll let you look at that um you just interrupt me if you find anything awesome on that um so the other thing is when you download the update you get a complimentary gift from nintendo which isn't anything new you often usually always often usually always there you go that's all that's all the adjectives i could think of um get in gift and in this gift you got a new uh or uh the animal crossing first birthday cake which uh, is pretty cool i we we spent a lot my me and my mom and noah spent a lot of time looking looking at it 
uh, last night trying to figure out what the fruits were. The fruits are not very well like like depicted on the strip. I know this is nitpicky, but anyways, it was just a thing I noticed. Like you can kind of see an orange and it looks like you see a strawberry. I'm not gonna lie. It looks like a strawberry and the other one looks like a watermelon. So either one of two things, they did really like shoddy artwork or possibly maybe this is um, leading us into new fruits and vegetables that we will find. I think those are really just fruits, but new fruits we might be able to get on our island. Because I'm telling you, Sean, the one looks like a watermelon. Like it doesn't look like anything we've had. It doesn't look like a fruit or anything. And I find it hard to believe that Nintendo is going to give us an item and they're going to like do a crappy art job on, on the fine details of it. I just don't see it. Could be wrong. Could just be conspiracy theory, which Lord knows I like to do when it comes to things possible in Animal Crossing. But uh, that's what uh, that's what I see. What are you looking up there, Mister Mister uh, Webbit? I'm, I'm I'm trying to see if the Highland Tour thing has gone live, but oh, good point. Yeah, it's an, it's especially for website. you. Uh, I don't think it is, and I'm falling out with my phone. So there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I'm using my phone. I've got the computer in front of me, but you know, I'll yeah. Anyway, I'll come. No, back. that's that was good thinking. Um, new seasonal items. There's a whoopee cushion. <laughs> the new pitfall. Yeah, that's what I think it is. I think it's a new pitfall. It makes you you can. I'm guessing from the picture I saw, you can set it on seats and stuff, and Somebody sits on it and, well, it makes a fart noise. I mean, it's a whoopee cushion. I mean, how much description do you need to this thing? Uh, that drops on March 22nd, or bleh, nope, just kidding, March 26th, and goes till April 1st, which makes sense since it goes till April Fool's Day. Um, so pick them up <laughs> while you can, and I'm going to stockpile them suckers. I can tell you that much. If I only got like four days or five days to get these things, I'm going to stockpile a whole bunch of them, use them at different times. Yeah, I'm assuming that when she you've bought one you should be able to just reorder them from your nook phone hopefully. you think you don't think they're going to be a special item uh, I, think it's special. I don't think you'll be able to i want to I'm, buy at least enough to put in every villager's house so that's a great idea <laughs> yeah put them on villagers i wonder if you can do that i hope you can do that yeah at least you got to be able to put them like can you imagine the cool videos people are going to get trying to get villagers to sit on these things like you just know what's going to happen what I think would be great is if, because you can very easily see that there's a whoopee cushion on the seat from the picture they took on Twitter. I would like it to be more like harder to see than that so that you don't, you don't know what you're about to sit on, you know, yeah. like you have to really not be paying attention to sit on one of these <laughs> things and not know what you're sit, you're about to sit on. So. Uh, prom season. Able Sisters and Nook Shopping will have prom items April 1st to April 30th. So that's a thing. You're going to be able to get a new wall, uh, new new uh, wallpaper, new flooring, a suit, cool prom dress. Be all good. You in on that, Sean? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm that's not what an, I expected I'm, to get from you. I wasn't expecting anything. I'm, I'm not a prom kind of person so <laughs> let's squirrel here for a second did you go to did you uh did you go to prom I, in I, high school we we had a yeah it was a prom i went to it um that that's all i'll say is i went <laughs> okay I, went, I, go. got, I got dressed up i was in a suit i put gel in my hair which i didn't do very much as a kid um Okay, so you did have hair at one point. Uh, man, I used to have really long hair. We need we need a Sean Abbott with hair picture in Discord. Okay, that's what I'm saying. You need to you need to you need to find one of those and put that in Discord. So I'll, I'll try. I think I think there isn't. I don't think there's a photo unless my mom's got them like on actual <laughs> photos. I don't think there is a photo of me that exists pre 2012. <laughs> You got to go ask mom. Mom's got one. I'm sure of it. Come on now. 
Um, uh, so for me, I uh, I did not. Uh, I don't think I ever went to prom. Actually, to be honest, <laughs> I was like a rebel in high school and just did what everybody else thought wasn't cool because I don't know because I was an idiot. Um, and so yeah, I never went to prom. So I'm gonna go to prom for the first time. I'm gonna set up a little prom area. And if I had, if my wife would play Animal Crossing, I'd invite her and we could go to prom together, but she doesn't play. Calling her out, even though she will never hear this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next, and something I am super excited for, um, and it seems like you are too, there is a Build-A-Bear collab coming. I'm very excited about this. Yeah, I told Lindsay about it last night and she like she looked at me and I was like, what, what, why? She goes, you're going to get them out of So yeah. Yeah, if I can, if I can get the knucklings and nook, yeah, I'd, and the Builder Bear website has no photos. There is no like hint to what's going to be available. So I've had to sign up for the newsletter. Which I'm I hate impressed. signing up to things. So I signed up to the newsletter to see what it's going to be when it releases. I am impressed. I actually have not done that yet, but I need to. Um it hit me that I'm probably not going to be able to build a bear. Like, I, I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know. I apparently didn't. I apparently forgot that there was a pandemic going on. So I'm not going to be able to build a bear. I'm probably just going to be able to order a bear, I would imagine. Or a villager. So you mentioned Nook. You mentioned the Nooklings. Like, who who else do you want? Um, Isabel. Uh, basically, everybody. So Blavers, <laughs> Blavers, Blavers would be amazing to have. Yeah, and, uh, it would I think be. Logan would absolutely love Blavers because he likes owls. So he has several hooties. So, oh yeah. Um, I don't know. You need everybody, wouldn't you? You need like Isabel. It's just I that thing. Yeah. At least the main ones, definitely the ones that are on your island all the time, right? Like, yeah, like all the like all the ones we've mentioned: the Nooks, the Blathers um isabel yeah all those guys like do you think they're gonna do i mean they obviously can't do all villagers obviously we're saying but, they wouldn't do her. yeah uh but do you no, think, think they would do, do like villagers. the more popular ones like uh bob or cherry or, or something like that um so we build about i reckon that you'll they'll do they're gonna do maybe your plain villages so like for me Ted, you're going to get a different color Ted's. Maybe, I don't know. There's so much they can do. And Nintendo, if Nintendo are backing it and think this is an out, a really good outlet, that they'll probably have a lot of variants. They had quite a few um, Pokemon variants because there was a Pokemon Builder Bear. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So I'm not very good. Like, we have probably four or five Builder Bears in the house that the kids have done. I actually did one for my wife when we were dating. Um, yeah, we probably got more like eight, really. Um, but like, I don't, I don't, I've never been interested in a topic that they've brought out or like a, like this. So I don't know what they normally do. Like, I don't know how many Pokemons they came out with uh, when, when that came out. So I don't know what to expect if, it, if, if we're only going to get like three or four or if we get 10 to 15. I don't know. Oh, and KK. KK has to be there. Come on. Ain't no yeah. way the KK is not there. So, I don't know. But I'll be interested to see it, and I will certainly... I will just buy them for the kids for, like, random holidays, because I know at some point they'll just come back to me. So, that'll be what I do. So, let's see. I'm looking now. Aww. <laughs> they do an Eevee with, like, a dressing gown. <laughs> Sean's in. Sean just bought an Eevee right there. So the collection they had, they had Dragonite, Eevee, Pikachu, Mew. Wow, the Mew's quite cool as well. Um, Snubball and Squirtle. And then they had like, um, most have had Jigglypuff because they've got a Jigglypuff cape. Um, a Pichu cape. Um, we've got a pack like the little penguin and then you've got different fruits that you could buy as well so they had quite a good collection mm -hmm. yeah what if they did that 
I don't know that I'd care enough, but like they could bring out the fruits, I guess, like the the pear, yeah. the apple. I don't know that that I don't bag. I wouldn't be really into that, but a, st- a stuffed bell bag. Okay, I'm in on that. I'm in on a stuffed, a stuffed bell bag. I, I would buy. I mean, wind. look. I mean, look. Motive. I would buy one. I got one behind <laughs> me right now. I bought a copy of Best Buy so that I could get the bell bag, which just hangs there. So it's a lot of conversation there. We're not going to go into. Um, uh, so, so yeah, I a bell bag I would buy, and I bet you're right. I bet they will have one of those. You can get Baby Yoda for those people that like Baby Yoda. That was a thing, man. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's still a thing, but it definitely was a thing for a while. Uh, so also, let's not let's not uh, let's not gloss over the fact that two grown adult men just talked about Build a Bear for like fifteen <laughs> minutes, <laughs> and I was so oh, sorry, stoked. <laughs> I was hoping by like this point people might have like just switched off and thought, right, we'll let them come, and we'll come back to it when they go yeah. back on to something else. And if you're not interested in Build a Bear, just skip ahead 15 minutes while Sean and I talk about Build a Bears. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, moving on, because uh, I think we spent our 15 minutes. Uh, Zipper is back. Are we excited? This is, a name, this is a name that I never ever wanted to hear ever again. <laughs> Zipper can zip off. <laughs> well, yeah, that's. Uh, I, I kind of agree. I'm. I'm. I'm okay. I'm okay if he wasn't here, but he's here, and all his eggs are here as well. Apparently. Um, <laughs> yep. Uh, but there are new items. It seems like the. It doesn't seem like there's new DIYs. It seems like the only new items are these. They're doing the whole like you know that little special item to the left, and when you walk in the nooks. That's yeah. I think you're gonna get a new one every day, and I think that's gonna be your new item. Is there? I don't. I I could be wrong, but I don't think there's gonna be new DIYs. Yeah, that's not too bad though, because yeah, you might be able to get the DIYs if you missed them last year, which is quite yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, that's um, gonna be the thing. Because I think there is a few that I might have missed. Because this it was this time it was Easter time last year where Lindsay got into it, so I think she hit it hard and got most of the. DIYs and shared them with me. So gotcha. I don't know. I have to see. But yeah, I, I'm I'm kind of hoping that they don't try and chuck in a fishing tournament and that you're going to be picking <laughs> water eggs, earth eggs, sky eggs, all the eggs. Oh. It'd be nice to see new fishing <laughs> stuff, though. Let me say that. Like, I mean, it'd be nice to get an update that said, "Hey, this, you know, you're in a new year of fishing tournaments. There's all new fishing items. That would be. I would really appreciate that because I don't. I mean. Noah likes to do like whenever he sees there's a fishing tournament on his island, he's like, "Oh yeah, let's do it, Dad." And I'm like, "Man, eh, sure, whatever." You know, I'm gonna get the I, same I see items. C- I see CJ on my island, and I run in the opposite direction. <laughs> <laughs> see, I'm still trying to get collect all the models, so I have this like stash of fish in my storage, uh, which would really smell at this point, I would think. Um, but I pull out three fish, and uh, I'm like, "Here you go, CJ. Make me a new model." So, yeah, I always. I always got fish. Him and Flick. I'm like, here you go. Which, speaking of, I don't ever have to fish again if I don't want to. I have caught 5,000 fish, and I have checked off that Nook Mile achievement. achievement. Thank you. Yeah, I couldn't remember. Markers, all the word was there. Uh, Nook Mile achievement from my list. And so now I'm on to diving which at the moment seems fun, but I'm sure when I catch the thousand that I need, I'll be sick of diving too. So um, there you go. There's that. Um, nook points. New, new. I don't know if this is going to be new currency. I, technically, it was in New Leaf, um, these nook points were. But uh, nook points are coming later this month. So that probably means uh, tomorrow or today after we get done recording that that's my guess i mean i'm just just throwing it out that's what normally happens you do realize sean that if we would have been on opposite weeks we would have just been done recording when uh, nintendo tweeted out that there was this big update so yeah i'm kind of hoping that they they they, because they listen, obviously, and they keep right, making yeah. the changes that you need, um, <laughs> that they've kind of gone, well, these who will we'll, we'll go into an opposite pattern of these guys, so that at least they've got something to talk about. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, no, that would be great. If they're on, like, the opposite week we are, that's cool. That would be fantastic. So hopefully they keep that up. 
Um, these So these Nook points are going to be used, I don't know, to collect all different kinds of things. It's interesting that they've hooked it onto the real phone, to your, I mean, the, not the Nook phone, it's on your real phone on the uh, Animal Crossing, in the Nintendo app on the Animal Crossing section, blah, blah, blah. Um, you, so you have to go I'd there. I'd like to say then, but sorry, what? Just no, go ahead. What no, I'd no, like no, 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 you Is if they can link it to your steps, bring Animal Crossing and a little bit of fitness together. So if you mm. walk more steps, you get more nook points because then people are going to go out and... Yeah. You just want to do that, Sean, because you walk a thousand million miles or, or steps a day. So <laughs> I, you'd be I, like... I, on average, I do 100,000 steps a week, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have more nook points than anybody else. <laughs> give me them. Give me the points. <laughs> <laughs> um, it'll be interesting to see how these are used and um, what you can do with them and are they tradable? Can Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm interested to see what they do with these things. And how, yeah, it's just, so are they on the, are they on the level of like, not platinum points? Yeah, platinum points. Are they like that? Are they, are they more, are they more connected to my Nintendo online or are they more connected to, well, they have to be more connected to Animal Crossing. No, now that I said that doesn't make any sense. Um, so no, they're more connected to Animal Crossing as in Nook points. Can they be used in like Pocket Camp? Are they going to, are they going to start putting Nook points in Pocket Camp too? um not that i play pocket camp anymore but um yeah i think that kind of died when uh new horizons came out yeah i did for me i can tell you that much other than to get the uh to get the shirt and and hat crossover that's about the only reason i went in there <laughs> so yeah i don't know we don't know much about them other than we'll be able to buy items we can buy the like the vacation poster that's in nook's office with these nook points so you know, there's that. I, I wouldn't mind having it. Sounds cool. Um, so yeah. Um, this next one, uh, I will. I don't think I told you this. I so there are Sanrio villagers and items too added to uh, Animal Crossing. Uh, you just need to buy the cards. And uh, Sanrio is the company that makes Hello Kitty stuff. And uh, from what I heard, you can buy. You can start getting them at Target, at least in America. Do you guys have Target in the UK? Nope. Okay. So you'll you get them somewhere else in the UK. Maybe Amazon. I don't know. Anyways, uh. I got I got DM'd in Twitter asking why we weren't talking about these cards. So I've talked about the cards. I don't know. I never really got into these. I never got into card buy. I'm I'm sorry. So I'm sorry we we're we're not talking about them more, but I don't I don't know much about them to be honest. I'm just watching the video about them now. Because I'm trying to see if it mentions anything to do with um, the UK and where you can buy them from. Because I'd be really annoyed if this is one of those things that you can only have in America. No, I highly doubt that. But Nintendo can prove me wrong. Um, yeah, I I'd be shocked if that's the case. But um, <clears throat> I am kind of bummed that I thought it was just villagers, and then I found out there's new items too oh, that you can only get with these cards. Okay, fair enough. It's an amiibo pack, so I'm going to imagine that I should be able to find them on Amazon. Yeah, yeah. I, I figured, I mean, I never tried, but I figured that would be the case. Um, but yeah, I am bummed that, that so there's these items that come with the cards, and uh, I wish I wish that wasn't the case, you know. These are these will be like the first items that I just legit can't get unless I buy these cards. So, oh wow, it's twenty three ninety nine for a pack of pack of how many? Six. How many packs are there? Does it say? Um, I don't know. It's an Amazon. It's I don't know. They're not available yet. So, yeah, gotcha. from free delivery from April twenty fourth. So. Well, there you go. I won't be buying them, Sean. And let me tell you why. I probably wouldn't be buying them anyways, but this was the only segue I had. Um, because I have spent the money on a Power A controller, that an, an Animal Crossing Power A controller that actually looks good. It's this sweet, it starts with white on one side and then has these like swooshes of, uh, of green on the right side. 
with a with a leaf. Power A now has, I believe, three, maybe more, but three that I that I know of uh, Animal Crossing controllers. And the first two they came out with were just way too busy for me. I didn't like them. They, I don't know, they just had all these different patterns and they drove me insane. But uh, I've been looking for a new kind of handheld controller. Uh, Sorry, that's 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 the one you wouldn't like. Yeah, yeah, that thing is that thing is just ugly to me. I'm sorry. I don't yeah. I don't uh, see Emily's switch light case is that design. Oh I'm sorry. Please forgive me, it's Emily. Right. I'm... <laughs> She's probably not loving. <laughs> I'm now looking for the other one. So So um but yeah, I was really excited. Marty was the one that shared it initially and that I saw and I was like, that looks really cool. And I uh I went on to Amazon and sure enough I could pre order it. So I have pre ordered myself. Animal Crossing controller, which I'm pretty excited about. It's like the one Animal Crossing swag thing that I didn't have. So, well, I mean, other than the Joy Cons on the Animal Crossing Switch. But, anyways, I feel like that was a crud ton of stuff, Sean. Yeah, that, that was a lot of. Uh, I'm just trying to look for this controller now, um, but I can't seem to find it. I will show it to you. Anyways, guys, we are going to move. While I'm showing this to Sean, we are going to move over to the Ted corner where Mr. Tim Off has left us an amazing dad topic. So, welcome to the dad corner. Um, as Nick nicely took us out, Tim left a pretty good question which i think the nintendo does talked about in their recent podcast um does nintendo grow with gamers or do gamers outgrow nintendo so it seems that people have been pretty salty on the internet about this topic saying that like about nintendo like it is the question she just said they just outgrown it and they want nintendo to be more grown up and have more grown up games like call of duty and the the higher end spectrum of games, but where Nintendo is, I love it and I never want them to change. Um, being about like Mario Crossing and Super Mario and things like that. Um, what, what's your thoughts on that, Nick? Here you go. Well, um, I immediately when I was listening to the Nintendo dads talk about this topic, I, I thought of, I thought of my analogy for it. Well, one. Like Nintendo's always going to do what Nintendo does, and that's going to be the same games. And those games are made for all spectrums, right? I mean, like, my son loves Mario 3D World. He loved it all the way until he beat Bowser's, and then I showed him the Star World, and he thought it was the coolest thing. And he tried the first level, and he said, nope, not for me. And so dad had to do the star road and the, and the bonus world and the champions road by himself, because my son was like, I'm not doing these. These, these are too hard. So like their games are built for all different kinds of gamers, but I don't think they're ever, I don't want to say ever, but I highly doubt we'll see them do like the call of duties or anything crazy like that. I just, that's just not their, that's just not their jam. I think they're dipping their toe into it because it, you know, they brought Apex Legends, Fortnite, um, which are gamers' games. So there's there is like a whole niche for those each of those games. Streamers, um, yeah, there's stuff out there on the internet. If you're a massive Fortnite player, it's there. The crazy building thing and that stuff that. You, baffles me how quick people can build stuff yeah. but it's there if you want to play that and I think like from family friends that have got kids that have got switches that's what they play they use the switch and it's just for Fortnite and Fortnite only but like it's like you said I could I could give Emily the switch and she could play Super Mario and her ability would come to a point where she just can't do it because there's that input process output so she can see what's happening on the screen but she can't 
figure out how to press the buttons quick enough to do what she needs to do to get Mario through that obstacle. Where if I then gave it to Jaya, because Jaya has played more for longer, she's more experienced. So she could get further than Emily. And then it'll get to a point where Jaya struggles, which then that's where I come, like you did with Noah. It's yeah. I've got a skill set because of the years of playing games and the years of playing Mario and you know, there's all that kind of, you can spot patterns and time things and you know that you have to slow down for certain areas where Mario sometimes likes you to keep going faster and faster, but sometimes you do need to stop and slow down. Um, mm-hmm. So I think in that, that absent, that is where for me, Nintendo grows with you because you it grows with your ability as a gamer. It doesn't like kind of, yeah. So it's like Zelda does the same. Mm-hmm. Emily plays Zelda when she first started playing Zelda. But for a while, when it came out, she was, I mean, six, five, five or six, five. She lived in five. So she literally, when she played it, she had a grasp of how the controllers worked, but she just went looking for horses and was quite happy to just right, tame a yeah. horse, and ride a horse and ride the horse around. She couldn't do the, like, basically the tutorial of the game where she had to like find, do the, um, the cave, not the caves, what were they called? Tombs. She had to do the tombs mm-hmm. and she couldn't do that. So, I gave it to her to see if she could do it and she could get to them. She couldn't figure them out. So I did them for her sort of thing. Um, now she's a bit older. She's got her own switch at her mum's. She keeps, like I get updates from her every now and then when she comes around and she's done them herself now. She's figured out how to cook and that she awesome. needs certain stuff to cook to get the, like the buffs to go into the cold. Mm-hmm. Um, so she's figured all that out. So that to me, again, is a really good representation of how Nintendo she's grown with Nintendo, not Nintendo grown with her. She's grown mm. into being able to play it. So, and now she's like, she's on with trying to do the first divine beast and she's struggling, but I know now that she understands that she's got to keep trying. It's a bit of a grind, but she'll get there. So, and I don't think that stops with Nintendo. It doesn't stop. So even now there's like master mode for those adults that really want to play Zelda yeah. and struggle master mode is really hard i i I am not one of those adults that want to do that i just don't (laughs) i've tried (laughs) i have tried it's so hard (laughs) i have i to be fair i haven't tried it but man i don't know it just yeah that that's that's something let me tell you um yeah and i i i agree with that like i don't think what i meant by that is i don't think nintendo is ever gonna dabble in like 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 publishing or developing a game like call of duty or something like that but they have certainly changed their heart and their mind um, throughout the years and letting other companies on their platforms that do those games already. And I think that's great. I don't have any problem with that. Um, and I think that's kind sense. of Nintendo's. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I think that's kind of Nintendo's answer to that is to say, Hey, you know, we're not going to be the company for you, but it's our platform and we'll let some, we'll let another company be on our platform that does. And I think that's cool. Um on the form of like, how do you grow? Well, I've said it numerous times in this podcast. It's why my Xbox isn't in the living room where I would much rather it be. I am not ready for Noah to experience Xbox games because, uh, okay, okay. So do you, I'm going to use this analogy on the cast and I don't know, it might fail. It might fall short. People might think it's dumb, but whatever. Um, do you have Amish communities in the UK? Do you do you know what that is? Do you? I, I, yeah, I know what they are. Yeah, okay. um, but we don't have that here. We have people who are like devout Christian. We have the Church of Jesus Christ, Mormons. So, uh, just for anybody who doesn't know, in um, um, the Amish community is like a demographic of people who are just very devout. And they have given up modern technology like cars and TVs and stuff like that for um, to spend more time with God and family. So that's as far as I'm going to get into that. But anyways, when when their kids turn 16, they have this thing called Rumspringa. OK, yes, which, which is where they're allowed to go out into the yeah, real world. Yeah. Not so there. In my analogy, all video gamers 
it's all Nintendo fans, all all Nintendo fanboys who start out with Nintendo have some point in their life where they have their video game rum springer, right? Where they're like, dang, you know, like <laughs> like there's like blood and guts and gore and awesome realistic graphics over there, and they look really cool. And I would really like to be, I really want to try that out, right? And so they go out and they they try that. And like the Amish community, like Amish kids. Some of them come back to the to the church and become Amish, and which would be like video gamers coming back and or Nintendo fanboys coming back to Nintendo, and some don't. Some choose to leave the church and and be out in the world. And though you know that would be like a video gamer sticking with that's, the Xbox or the PlayStation. That's me. Yeah, Sean <laughs> Webbit, and others, other Amish folks come back to the church. And are like my Amish neighbor and still sometimes cheat by burying an electrical cable under their house to get, you know, electric <laughs> every once in a while. And that's like the Nintendo fanboy who, you know, is like, hey, I'm a Nintendo guy, but I might cheat every once in a while with a little Xbox, which I guess now is like me. So that's my analogy for how for how uh, how we grow as a as a video game. Yeah, I mean, I. I'm trying to think now. I was, um, yeah, I was Nintendo, 1992, 1993. I got the NES for Christmas, and then it wasn't long after I got that that they actually brought the SNES out. So I got, an, I got that. My brother was Sega, so my brother got the Sega Master System, the Sega Mega Drive. I, my mum and dad got me Nintendo. So, um, and then. 64 i got that as a christmas present and then i always wanted a game boy but never got a game boy so that's just my only saltiness to my parents is why did you never give me a game boy <laughs> but anyway um i think that's because they probably knew that i would never ever ever speak ever again <laughs> so, yeah <laughs> um yeah and then the gamecube i got the gamecube um and it seemed a while then between then I, I think I drifted to PlayStation a little bit. Um, and then the Wii, I got the Wii. And then that's that's kind of like the, the Xbox 360 is probably where I fell off the Nintendo family. So that was my, the Nintendo, the, the Xbox 360 was my rumspringer. Um, and I, I wouldn't say I completely went away from it, but I was definitely more like, wow these games are more in depth there's more to it the gameplay is faster so like when you then look at the Wii and I'm thinking well it's just all about me's and yeah uh, I'll carry on playing Xbox so but then like the the Switch came out and along with that came some fantastic graphic games from Nintendo and it's like that point I went back into the Nintendo world big time so the the Switch and the Xbox kind of sit side by side for me as mm -hmm. they're equal partners for the gaming and if I want to play a game that's you know 4k like Warzo stuff like that that fine I'll fire up the Xbox but I can also then jump across to the Switch and have a similar level of difficulty with the Switch with like levels on Bowser's Fury which is challenging me as a gamer because it's it's difficult. The camera angles mm. can not always work for you. That it's rotating puzzle. I absolutely dislike anything that rotates in Super Mario, where you have to kind of like walk along it, but you're not going anywhere to try and follow the rotation. That just gives me so much anxiety. It's unreal. <laughs> <laughs> so I hold my breath all the time. So, but and that's why I love it because the game. That game was out years ago, and I probably would have found it more difficult back then than I do now. But mm -hmm. I've gone back and played um, Super Mario 64, so the, the 3D All Stars. Gone back and played games that I played years ago. That like I've got to a point in the game where I remember getting stuck, being able to do it, but then getting stuck somewhere else. So yeah, it's, yeah. I can't see why people are solid if if. Yeah, if you're angry and want Nintendo to do things that Xbox and Sony are doing, then 
you, you've got Nintendo all wrong and you need mm-hmm. to have a word with yourself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're never going to be that. They're never going to be that company. And, um, and that's okay. I mean, you know, I, I, Nintendo, like I said, Nintendo does what Nintendo does and it's worked darn well for him. So I'm not going to be the one to sit here and say they should change quite frankly. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, you know, I had this kind of, so for me, I pretty much played Nintendo until I moved out of, uh, until I moved into college, until I went to college, because I knew that the games that I wanted to play were not going to be games that my mom were gonna, was going to be pleased that I was playing under her roof. So it was like, once I got to college, I was like, sweet. I was like, now nah, I, can, I can, I can play whatever I want. So I, uh, so at that point I was all, I was all excited to get a PlayStation but like when I got the money to get one, uh, the Xbox was like the new shiny thing in the world. And so I was like, okay, well, these PlayStations have been out forever. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to take a gamble on this Xbox. And so I did. And so I, just because of that, I've always been an Xbox Nintendo guy. I never left Nintendo either. I mean, I, I always had my, I had my GameCube, the Wii. The only point that I left Nintendo is kind of when I left video gaming. And I feel like I just told the story not too long ago. So I'll just I'll like just glaze over it. Um, when I when I first got married and and we were having kiddos, I, I didn't I didn't leave Nintendo. I, I pretty much left video gaming for a few years because life was just too crazy. And the only video gaming I did was on my on my phone. Um, I probably would have been with Nintendo if the switch would have been out at that point. But uh so yeah that's uh that's how i think that's how i personally think people grow with nintendo yeah cool well i think we covered that in some great depth (laughs) so uh well uh how i can see if anybody's left any notices for the over in the village's bought and bond let's do it Welcome to the Villagers Bulletin Board. Uh, first, before we get started, we have, we have quite a lot of bulletins on the Bulletin Board today. And so we want to thank all of the Patreon members for hanging out with us on Discord, leaving some awesome messages, some comments, some questions. You are all seriously the best community on the internet, and we love you all. And if you are listening to this and would like to chat with us, uh, plus a whole bunch of other Animal Crossing fans. You can join in on all the action for as little as a dollar a month over on patreon.com slash Nintendo Dads. Plus, I think there's other ways too by like a, a Twitch. I don't know. There's like a Twitch sub now you can do to get in. I don't know. There's all kinds of stuff. But uh, uh, the main way to do it is a dollar a month, as little as a dollar a month, uh, over at patreon.com slash Nintendo Dads. So, Let's uh, let's jump into some of these uh, comments and questions. Uh, first, from from Frosticles, um, Nick. This game has been a lifeline for me this last year. Originally, I wasn't going to get it. Then it was a game that I was gonna use in hopes to get my daughter into game. But with the hype within the community, I jumped in and fell in love with it. I feel like I've taken a special journey with the people around with people around the world and made some great friends, all thanks to this game, uh, community and podcast. So I thank you, Sean and Dan. I spent my one year anniversary Saturday night redecorating my house and doing what I love most a year ago. And that was tarantula farming, man. I forgot. I forgot that that was like his thing. Whole room oh, of awesome. tarantulas. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. And he would hold them and sell them to Flick. He wouldn't like sell them at Nooks. I, I thought that was amazing. I totally forgot about that. Um, man, I haven't done that in a long time, but it hit me in the feels. I've also been blessed with joining you guys twice, which was great fun. And who knows, hopefully soon I can become a three-feet guest, the first three-feet guest. Uh, <laughs> So many memories. I was so dedicated that I woke up at 1 a.m. I didn't know the story. I woke up at 1 a.m. so Dan could do my island tour. Thank you guys and everyone for making this game my 2020 game of the year. I remember the island tour, but I didn't know the story about him waking up that early. That's that's pretty awesome that you did that. So. It's the, the, 
I can remember when we were talking about the game and he didn't seem interested. But then, yeah, I mean, he's been on the show twice. He's been a massive contributor in the community for giving oh, for people sure. items. Um, every time, like, I've gone on and, like, said I needed something, he's always the guy that messages pretty much instantly, like, yep, yeah, I've got your side, I'll send it, don't worry. So, yeah, thanks yeah, very much, Frosticles, for being such a pillar in the community. Yeah, for sure. He's awesome. And we can definitely set that. up for him to be the first three-peat. I got no problem with that. That'd be it. <laughs> uh, so our former ho- co-host, um, now the co-host of Retro Logic, also a, now a Nintendo Dad family of podcast. Him and Datfast are doing all the retro stuff over there, and they're killing it. So uh, go take a listen to Retro Logic. Um, but Dan says... I wish I had the time to truly dig back into Animal Crossing. It really is a moment in time for gaming that we'll never forget. Um, yeah, that you know that can definitely be a thing, right? I mean, having time. You're, I mean, you're you're struggling with that this this last couple of weeks, right? With work and and everything yeah, else. Yeah, and and it, and it's with lots of other games and stuff that you're wanting to play. Yep, Animal Crossing is ace, and it's one of those games that you can put down and jump back into. But it is sometimes hard to find the flow with the the game, especially with all the craziness that's going on in the background. Um, but yeah, and my aim is after we finish this, if we get a little bit of time, I'm gonna try and fire it up and do a couple of things. But that's that's the only type of thing. Like after the podcast, or on a night is probably the only time I ever play now. I don't dedicate time to just playing it, but yeah. it's just life. But yeah, I can, I can see where Dan's coming from. It is nice to jump in and out and it's difficult sometimes <laughs> because you can, you can quite easily kill two hours just doing, oh, yeah. doing little Not, things. And, and if you then set yourself, yeah. And if you, if you set yourself a project, you can be there days. Like, mm-hmm. This is why oh. people are like, so are you going to start a new island ever? And I'm like, no, I'm never. I'm down to now where I like, I have a couple of goals, but I can, I can like chip away at them in 30 minute increments throughout the day, you know? And just like, if I play for 30 minutes, sometimes maybe I'll do a little extra and play for an hour, but that's like, that's all I need to do now. Like I've got, I've got my island the way I want it. I'm just collecting stuff I'm missing and I got no, I got no plans. I'm never doing it. Yeah. which then brings us into Tim's. Yes, it so does. Go for it, man. When, yeah, when Animal Crossing New Horizons eventually falls off the main page of your Switch, how do you think most people will revisit the game? Every now and then, after some time passes, um, would you start a new island? Or will you just go in and tear everything down? Move stuff around and rebuild? I can answer that one, because uh, I did that. <laughs> so... At about the nine month mark is when I went in and thought, okay, there's loads of stuff that's happened. There's loads of stuff I know that's coming. So boom, I went in and I moved everything and spent a lot of time doing it. Yeah, you did. So, a lot of time and a lot of bells. Yes. Uh, Four million bells, I think. Something ridiculous like that. And I moved all the villages that were scattered around to one area. I moved my house to a dedicated area. I've made... I've put the shopping, like so the two stars in one area, the campsite in a separate area with a whole campsite area. So I did a lot with it. Um I kept the pumpkin patch because I'm expecting them to bring more vegetables into the game. They haven't yet, but yeah, I'm expecting I'm thinking, them to do I'm thinking that. you're right about that. But yeah. Um so I've got areas set up for things that I think are coming in the future. So but yeah, and it's never fallen off the main page of the Switch. It's always like the second or third in the row. So, like at the moment, it, I think it's sat in third between, after Mario, uh, Bowser's Fury, and Apex Legends. So, it's never been one of those where I've removed it. And that's twelve months, and I don't play it as often as you do. Like, I don't even think I've hit four hundred hours yet. So, um, which I've achieved quite a lot in such a small amount of time. When yeah, I go in, sure. I go in hard. To get things started. Sure, man. So, um, but yeah, I, I know Lindsay fell off pretty quick. She hit it hard. I think she burnt out, but then she also took on a load of stuff. So she started the the Caramama business and 
a PGC and things like that. So like she dropped off quick because she had mm-hmm. mum duties and then life goals and stuff like that. So and she's killing it. So um but yeah. Uh uh Yeah, I pretty I much have... answered it. Like I I may rebuild my island down the road at some point. Um, but it would be down the road like maybe maybe next year like next yeah. year like 2022 um it's like if they give us another level so if we can yeah. get to that far height then that's when things would get really interesting for me yeah but i specifically when i thought about my island this time i built it in like modules so like there's it would be very easy for me if they if they added new items that i wanted to just like i could easily tear down the like the beach shop or, or the pizzeria or like half the kids play area and just like add another module. And that's how I wanted to do it so that I didn't have to do what I did. Uh, was it like August and September, which was kind of what you're talking about that full rebuild. Like I, I was just like, oh, I don't want to do that again. Like it's so much work and so much time. So, um, and there's no way I'm ever leaving. I'm ever getting rid of this Island. That's just, I mean, I have, I have so many DIYs, so much stuff. It's just never happened. Yeah, and then he goes on to ask, like, how about an event where people get together for Animal Crossing reunion, just get back into it, visit family friends or online friends, or maybe it's just a major update from Nintendo that refreshes the game. All of those happen. I mean, the mm-hmm. dinner table made you create the dinner table. Yep. Um, Which nobody ever was... got to see. I wanted <laughs> I eight people sitting around that table so bad. I don't know what's happening with that, but we were having internet issues, so yeah, that never it actually happened. But it's it's things like that we all played it we all came like the people mm-hmm. that we did meet we could see like the changes like tim's beard i mean his avatar in yeah animal crossing is like tim now with the world's biggest beard <laughs> um tim also then goes on to us like, when do you think you'll be done with animal crossing new horizons and how do you imagine if you are done that you'll ever return to it so i don't think i'm ever going to be done so I, I know it's a game that I am I will fire up five times a week. I won't fire it up every day, but I will jump in. I'll get in there. I'll, I've got weeds that I need to pick up, man. That, that's the worst thing I ever did is plant all my weeds in that campsite area because they spread like wildfire. <laughs> yeah, so It's just like real life, man, you know? I, I think that's my, my next one is I'm going to go and try and figure out how I can stop that from happening. So... <laughs> Um, I'm not going to lie. I, so I have a record now of like a year of play every day for at least like half an hour or something like that. I've been on every day to like, I was thinking when I saw this question, I was thinking, when am I going to, when am I not going to play a day? And man, it's going to be a while. Like, oh, like, so here's what I can see. I can see me playing every day unless, you know, there's a life event that happens that, you know, something, I mean, I mean, my kids are more, my kids, my wife, family, friends, they're all more important than this game. So, I mean, if I had to be gone for a day to do something to, to help them, I would be gone for a day in a heart. Um, uh, but if there's not a life event like that, the next thing I could see, uh, we are, we have, we, uh, la- I'm sorry, I'm, I'm stumbling. Last October was our 10th anniversary and we were going to go on a cruise. As you can imagine, uh, that didn't happen <laughs> because there was a pandemic. So then we moved it to this February. Well, that obviously didn't happen because the pandemic got worse. So then we moved it to uh, this coming October. So it's going to be an 11th anniversary cruise at this point. If I go on that cruise, I guarantee you I will not play Animal Crossing every day. 100%. That, that'll be the first time I don't play Animal Crossing. Um, mm-hmm. You I don't think... think... You'll take it with you. I think oh, it's this, oh, I'll this, take it with me. No, 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 no. Don't get <laughs> me wrong. No, no, no. Don't get me wrong. I will take it with me. I'm just saying, I guarantee you there will be days that I won't play. That's what I'm saying. I don't know. If I, you if don't if believe I me, switch, do you? I can I see t- the skepticism. I, yeah, if I took the Switch with me, and I know, like, especially the kids won't come in and like the Mrs. Lindsay's off for a shower and getting ready for the evening. I know I can be ready. <laughs> like, like that I can be ready in 
10 minutes. Oh, it's true. Um, but I don't know. That's what I see. As my... There I go. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to call me out. I can already see it. Oh, wait. No, we won't have, we won't have cell service. So you won't be able to. Um, so, yeah. But man, I don't, I don't know. Like what stops me from playing? I guess if I get all the Nook Mile achievements and they stop putting items in the game, then yeah, I probably would fall off at that point. I'd probably say, Meh. I don't got, you know, there's nothing left for me to do. I mean, right now I am really just keeping myself going by challenging myself to get all these Nook Mile achievements, um, which is pretty grindy, let me tell you. Um, but uh, yeah, other than that, I, I don't know. That's the only thing. Um, so or something. Uh, now that it has been one year and 500 plus hours, which is rookie numbers for him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> for you, sorry. I have enjoyed a game I would never thought I got into. Had my son not wanted to try it, I thought it was too simple and lacked a story to draw me in. After completing my island for villagers to come, the game started to grow on me, and this was further compounded by wanting to complete my museum and being the nerd I am. Amen. Finally. It's, it's gripped into me deeper when coming onto the Discord and connecting with like-minded dads that played the game and made friends with people I never set out to make friends with. But looking back, I would have rushed to not miss the opportunity to make those friendships. So it, that speaks true. It's it, like, if it wasn't for this game, I wouldn't have done this podcast, which means I wouldn't have spoken to you. We speak like, almost daily almost, <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, like Dan and I never met Dan who I don't speak to as much as I wish I could but I, he's got loads going on I've got loads going on so you know but mm-hmm. I know for a fact if I dropped him a message and asked him how he was he'd like reply in heartbeat so yep. it's done a lot it's brought I think it's brought a lot of members in the Discord community who are all fans of the Nintendo dads closer together and probably now have formed pretty good relationships uh you know they play quite often i, I you know i'm a friend of uh jason who frosticles i'm a friend of his on facebook and you know it's nice as like see the sentimental things for him like his kids it's like kids birthdays and like his anniversary of his wife and things like that so yeah you know, it's i have made a friend i've made an actual friend where who i care about his well-being and how he is the same with you Kev. so mm-hmm. yeah it's done a lot it's been quite a big impact yeah yeah i mean i've said it a million times i don't know what i don't know what the pandemic would have looked like without this podcast for me i mean uh, uh you, you guys i've said it uh, i don't know i don't want to repeat myself but i mean i you guys were the guys i talked to like when we were really in quarantine when we were really locked down and there and you couldn't go anywhere and you couldn't really everybody was kind of busy doing their own thing so even though i could have picked up the phone and talked to like a handful of guys who i know locally i don't know we were just all so busy and this was just already scheduled you know we already scheduled to do this thing so it was like yeah i want to do this thing and so yeah i don't know why for that period of time it was like that was that was what we did and maybe i'd text a friend here and there but but nothing face to face like we had here. And so, yeah, Animal Crossing helped me get through that through. It's funny. The game wasn't as big of a deal this time, though. The, when I was in college, it was the game that helped me get through that period of time in life. Um, but in this point, it was more the game precipitating me wanting to talk about it more. So, you know, having this podcast. And so it's just kind of an interesting way how it all worked out. Yeah, it definitely gave a focus away from everything that was happening because the yeah. world was crazy still is crazy it's yeah, just for sure. that crazy has now become the new norm <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it seems like it man unfortunately so but yeah and I, I joked about the 500 plus hours um i'm not going to mention the actual numbers because i mentioned that on the uh dinner table <laughs> called you out there <laughs> so oh, it's fine you can do it it's it's totally cool i i uh i'm yeah. i'm fine 50, 51 real life days 1240 hours <laughs> 51 real life days wow that's a lot of days that's like well let's see so it's been around for a year so it's like how much of it that's like uh one twelfth of a one twelfth of a year what is that pretty much no no two twelfths of so it's i'm not good at math this isn't my this isn't (laughs) my place 
one sixth of a year. That's what it is. One sixth of a year, almost. Yeah. Almost a seventh. If you want to do it into sevenths. Okay, there you go. Yeah. 365 days divided by 51 gives you 7.1. There you so, go. A seventh of the year. A seventh of the year I've spent in Animal Crossing. Sounds about right. That's good. Yeah. I'm, I'm comfortable <laughs> with that. <laughs> Ace. Uh, so we've got one last question, haven't we? Yep. One more. Um, what is an item that isn't customizable that you wish was? <laughs> you want me to go first? Uh, you can do. I'm, good. I'm saying that because I know there's a lot. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, there is. But for me, and I had to really think about it because I was. I know there have been times where I've like gone to the, gone to the DIY bench and been like, I'm gonna customize this. And I'm like, oh, I can't. Crap. But I guess just because uh, the recency bias is what it's gonna be on this one is gonna be Mario items. I think that was such a lost opportunity. Like. The pipes could be different colors. The coins could be blue or red or black. All colors we've seen in Mario games. Like, like we could easily have done that. You could have made the mushroom only be like the mushroom and make it, you could have uh, like made it the super mushroom, but then have you customize it to be the, the extra life mushroom. I mean, there's so many different things they could have done. You can have the purple mushroom, which is the poison. You can have a customize it so you get the mega mushroom, so you're really big. Yeah. Oh yeah, the mega mushroom. Yeah, and the purple. Yeah. Like I don't know. That just makes sense to me. They should have. Uh, they should have done stuff like that. Yep, I agree. That's the pipes. They, they could have done a, some a lot. Well, especially now I've got six. Um, you have no idea where you're coming out when you go into one of those things, do you? <laughs> <laughs> it's become it's it, yeah it's becoming quite repeatable that sometimes they just all end up taking me to the same spot in the middle of the woods, <laughs> nice. <laughs> which is really annoying because that's not how I want them to work. Because so I think if you get to a point you have too many, they just default to just send you to the same place. <laughs> nice, I'll remember that. Um, but yeah, there's there is a lot. I, but my eyes now gone blank. Like if you get the acoustic guitar, I don't know. You can't customize that to be lots of different colors but you can buy different colored acoustic guitars so if you want a, a guitar collection in your house you're going to have to work and probably use knuckers on but mm-hmm. for the sake of a customizable a customization kit you could have changed the color of it yeah it's silly how they've done some of that stuff and then just today or just this week i guess i realized that uh you can customize the frying pan to have different food in it. So like, it's also just a strange, like the, you know, you're like all of a sudden it's weird. The things that you can't customize. And then it's also weird. The things you're like, Oh, I can have spaghetti in this pan or some kind of weird pasta stuff or, or like, I don't know. I don't know. It was like chicken or something. I don't know, but you can have different meals in the frying pan. You can customize. It's just oh. funny. Um, on, while we're speaking of customizing the umbrellas, I have seen that somebody has made a GameCube. Oh, that makes sense. You can make them into a box. Yeah. 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 That's pretty awesome. People, yeah, people are really, people are really going above and beyond with those, which you would expect. So, yeah. You, garden car people will be doing all sorts of crazy stuff soon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I saw some person, instead of having, um, instead of having signs like you would, like you do in the orchard, which like apples and pears and stuff. They took the umbrella, turned it into the box like you can do, and they they made like little pears in the in the box. Uh, so they made it look like crates of pears and crates of apples and crates of oranges. It's just amazing. Like it's just so cool what those people can do. It makes me jealous, yeah. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I suppose once you figured out how, what shape of the box you can make, there's a lot you can do. So. Yeah, and I haven't got there, but I did so I just kind of realized the box trick today and so just just this uh this evening i i made my first like box just a rudimentary box out of the out of the umbrella so now now i know how to make the box now i just got to try to do something that's a little ingenious with it other than here's a box (laughs) ace cool well thanks everybody for your questions and comments and kind words especially like frosticles and dan so should we head over to the gaming topic let's do it
So, welcome to the final segment of our podcast, um, which is the gaming topic. Um, this week, we've chosen to talk this episode, we've chosen to speak about Apex Legends. So, I kind of, while we were recording with Nick, uh, not Nick, because you are Nick, we were recording with Tim and everybody from the Discord community at the dinner table, I downloaded the game, even though I've tried it on the Xbox and really didn't think I could get on with it. I I try again on the Switch and realize it's not as jumpy, bouncy around as I thought it was. So, but we thought we'd have a conversation about it um, because I know you're playing it, Nick. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, I was I was interested to have a conversation with you because I know you're you know you're 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 a Warzone guy. You play you play Call of Duty, and so I thought it would be fun. I don't normally get into these things. But I don't know why Apex Legends kind of, I mean, I always wanted to get into Fortnite and I know you don't have to tell me, I know you don't have to build, but it always bugs me that I'm going to play a game that there's this large component of that I'm just going to ignore. Like I just can't get past that in Fortnite, even though I could not build and be just fine. I just can't do it. See, I, I tried, as I say, I tried Fortnite. I played it and I got a win. As soon as I got a victory royale, I was like, right, that's it. I'm done. <laughs> completed it so and i did it without building so because i couldn't i can't figure out people like you, you come across people and then like they suddenly just build this great tower and you're like oh oh dear yeah. but then i couldn't do that so i just i i went strategic and hit as a bush <laughs> yeah and that's how i usually and see that's how i got the farthest the one time i got to three and that's when I gave up Fortnite. Actually, I, del- I just literally deleted it off the Switch. I hid in a bush. There was three of us around. I walked out of the bush, and there I saw this guy on, like, this tower of, I don't know, thing that he had built. And I'm like, what the – how did he even build the, like? And then I see these two guys. It's just me and, and two other guys. And they're just, like, going at it. They're, like, shooting their creations and building it and shooting and building it. I'm like – Nah, I can't do that. Like, like I'm never gonna win. Uh, so I just happened upon a bad match. I think where it was like two two guys that were really good at that kind of stuff, and I was like, man, I'm never gonna be able to do that. <laughs> so I went and tried to shoot them, and they killed me immediately. And then I was like, nope, I'm done. <laughs> I never went. I've seen I've seen loads of funny videos where like there's an emote now where you can you you can sit your character down. They start eating popcorn. <laughs> And yeah. <laughs> I was in a video and this person's like, she's got the Chun-Li skin and she's there and she's like, she's watching somebody and they spot each other. And this person starts building this elaborate, like a labyrinth of buildings and designs. <laughs> and she just starts the, the popcorn <laughs> thing. And she's like eating popcorn. Anyway, and then this person hops off this giant elaborate statue and she just takes them out with one shot. And it's just like, <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Uh, yeah, that was almost me. Except I would have just been murdered right there. That's how. That's how I. That's how I ended. Yeah. So yeah, I played Fortnite. I've played a lot of Call of Duty Warzone. Um, I played Call of Duty Mobile. I played Fortnite Mobile. Um, so yeah, I kind of gone around the houses with them all with the battle mm-hmm. royale stuff. So um, my friend Gaz, who I sometimes do a stream with for Call of Duty, he plays apex legends a lot my brother plays it heavily so there is people that i could probably play with that have played it more than me and get some more hints and tips but i think i'm going to try my best to do any of it on the switch with people from the community so if you're ever on and want me to join in give me a shout i'm quite happy to join so but yeah if we want to talk about like the differences between this and other first person shooters and that i can cover quite well (laughs) Yeah, let's. I mean, let's do it. I'm. Let's let's start there. The bummer is with you and me. Like I'm a. Just to go back to what you said about jumping in with you, the problem is, like we are. Our time difference is a bummer because when you're probably on Noah's home, and that's like a. It's a very. It's very much a like no Noah. Like Noah can't be playing Apex Legends yet. He's too young. So. Um, so yeah, that's the bummer. It's a, always, I saw you the one time and I was like, I was like sitting there with no one. I was like, well, I can't make this happen. <laughs> yeah. You say no, I, I played a, one of my favorite matches of Call of Duty Warzone that I have recently. It was played with two Scottish kids and they must have been. Probably, yeah. 
um, 10, 12 years old because they had the voices weren't great. They were very high pitched, so they can't have gone through adolescence. Um, <laughs> but like, it was the funniest game I'd ever played because they were like screaming at each other, like in a really thick Scottish accent. And I was like, this is just so funny. And I, I think I spent most of my time laughing, but <laughs> it, they were really good. <laughs> they carried me sure. quite well. Which is, I have, but, yeah, yeah, I have no doubt. Yeah, and it's no, no shade. Like if you're, if your kids play that game, that's fine. Like whatever. I'm just, it's just what me and my wife have decided to do. So yeah, if if you're gonna let them play a first person shooter, this is probably this off is probably a really good entry level for them because yes, you're shooting at each other, but there's no blood. There's no yeah, yeah, god. There's no like. Yeah, this is probably a really good entry level. So mm-hmm. that's yeah, that is a good point. Which brings me to some of the first difference between them is that th- there's a lack of realism, which I like in Call of Duty and how things react. So um, I've got no idea of what weapon is better than the other in this game. So like I have had to ask the community and watch some videos, which I don't normally do. <laughs> mm-hmm. In a game, I don't normally watch videos on how to figure out how to do things better. Um, but yeah, I've only played it handheld. I've not played it docked yet. So I need to experience that as well. So I'm hoping that the depth of field when it's docked is better than when handheld because that's another thing I'm struggling is spotting people in the distance. Mm-hmm. So that's a real problem. And it is better docked, it's not great but it is better docked than it is handheld because I played a handheld and I was really frustrated um, with how, with that part of it. Um, And so, and then I played it, I played it docked. uh, Was it? No, it's Friday night. It was, it was, I played it right before we, we did the dinner table. Um, And so I was playing it with a friend and playing it docked was much better. So, yeah. I'll give you that. Um, but that's that. I, yeah, uh, the aim down sight system's pretty good. Um, it, it brings it like it narrows your depth of field, so you don't see everything. Not narrow your depth of field, sorry, narrows you. What's it called? The, but you can peripheral the, your field of vision or whatever. Yeah, that's the one. Field of vision. So your peripheral's not as big, so you're just focusing and like I played first person shooters where that doesn't change and that could be really annoying i know people adjust it on call of duty so it doesn't change but i can't do that I, i'm if i'm aiming down the sights at you it's because i want to just look at you <laughs> and nothing yeah. else mm-hmm. so um there's a lot of buttons so there's like lots of different buttons to do lots of different things in this game which is I find it, it, that's the did most difficult. Like, there's a button for your energy shield. There's a button for, like, um, what's the button? What do you call it now? Um, for your lethal, so like frag grenades and stuff like oh, that. Oh yeah. And I don't know what everything does. The the special, I haven't a clue. Mm-hmm. The skill to use, I'm struggling with. So, I I am struggling with. The grenades seem in this, and so understand when I make these comments for anybody who's listening, they might be like, "What? There's a way. There's a you know, there's a new, there's a way to do this." And I haven't played a ton, and I I certainly want to play more because I for some reason I'm somewhat drawn to this game, and I don't really know why. Um, because it's not normally with a game like this. If I get if I don't get it, then I'm out on it. Um, but for some reason, I just kind of keep wanting to come back to this game. Um, and so like the grenades seem difficult to me. I have to hit what I believe is the left on the, on the D pad to bring it up and then select. And it's like, that's way, like if I, if I need a grenade, I need a grenade, man. Like I don't, I don't have time to hit the D pad and select a grenade and then get ready to throw it. And it's just like, I don't know. And there may be a way to map that to, to a button to make it quicker, but that that's what I could personally use to be honest. Yeah. Let then me that's... throw a grenade. Yeah, that's the the thing I don't like about it at the moment is for me, Call of Duty. I've got a bump, the bumper button. You've got so the right bumper button, which is the same button, which isn't the same button in this game. 
So the right bumper button throws the lethal or uses your tactical. And the there's one button you can switch between the two. So it's really quick. Don't have to think about it much. Where with mm-hmm. this, it's like you say, you have to hold down on the D-pad. You have to select which one you want. You then have to press the D-pad button again to equip it and then throw it. And it's just like, by then I've been shot and I'm dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, so, I, I feel the same way. Same exact way when it comes to that. I, I didn't understand that at all. No. Um, so, I don't, yeah, the, the control style, I, I'm say, I'm going to say I don't like it. It's because it's alien. It's new. So yeah. I reckon if I play it for a while and get used to it and pick up the pace of things, I'll probably enjoy it more. But at the moment, it's really, it feels really alien and lumpy and like, I'm, I'm spending a lot of time looking at the, the pictures at the bottom of the screen like what, what is that so, I have to press it. so then it's taking my focus away from what's actually going on yeah but the thing I do like about the game and it helps because I'm an absolute noob to it um, is the follow option so when if you're a team and somebody chooses somewhere to land and then they set off it takes you all with them which oh, really when like. you're when you're when you're parachuting Dropping or in. gliding down or whatever. Yeah, which yeah. I really like that because it's like, oh, cool. That's that's gonna make me follow you all the way to the point where you want to go. Yeah, I think that's that's great. Normally, I because I am a noob, I'm normally like you can you can relinquish the ability. For some reason, it always seems like I end up being jump master, and I'm like, nope, nope, somebody else figure this out. <laughs> so so I usually relinquish that. Which was cool the one time because I they were like I didn't realize you could get like sucked down those those blue tubes in the sky. There's the uh, yeah, there's I the blue yeah, there's like the blue tube that comes out that comes from the ground and up into the sky. If if you go in there like the guy that was jumping, if you if you aim towards that, you'll get sucked in there and go like into a building wherever it, wherever it points you to. And so yeah, some dude just like just did that and i was in this place and all of a sudden i was like in this trove of weapons and i was like oh this is awesome <laughs> thanks for bringing us here this is great so i, I will do say like, though you uh, what yeah go ahead um i like the quips so like each character has like um because i so far i've only played as pathfinder the robot Mm-hmm. I find it really funny. I like the fact, like when he introduces himself, he has to tap a little screen in the middle to try and make it work. He, he's like, he's oh, a bit yeah, jilted yeah. and broken. Yeah. But like, um, when you first land and then like the, you get somebody gets first blood, they go like, "What did he say?" He says, "Ah, first blood." And luckily, it wasn't any of us. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So I like that. Like made me smile, and I was like, "Oh, that's a really good addition." So yeah. there's little bits like that that I like. Mm. I am not super good at using them. I I played with somebody who was, and that's when it made me realize their 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 benefit is the like the tag system that they have to like found enemies or go here. Or I'm doing that or that's that's real. That was really cool. Like I would have never understand the understood the benefits except. Um, <laughs> so here's my funny story. The first I get out of tutorial, I play the first round. I probably played. I don't know. 15 20 rounds since it came out and the first round i played we won i did absolutely nothing let me let me be very clear i played with it i just got paired with a guy who was absolutely amazing like like i was just chasing him at first i went to the at first i didn't think i actually i thought maybe i was still in some kind of like tutorial mode because i'm like man, I'm just running around and this guy's shooting everything. I was like, maybe I don't understand how this game is played or maybe I'm not actually playing in the actual online. Nope, I was. We won the first the first match I ever did. We won because this guy was just like, he was super awesome. I did absolutely nothing. No kills, didn't even get any damage, to be honest. In fact, the one time he died, the only thing I did was bring him back to life because I was playing as the medic. He crawled to me and I brought him back to life. But before, I, mean, I bet he was like, before before he did it i had no idea what was going on or anything he he dies he falls down he's bleeding out he comes to me and like i'm shooting at him because i'm like i don't know who this guy is or what's going on so i'm just like i'm like shoot and nothing's happening and i'm like oh he's on my team okay i get it now all right <laughs> and so i bring him back to life or, or you know whatever and so yeah 
That's my story. That's oh, my well, one win. Game. I win. Yep. <laughs> yep. It's Never done it again. So. <laughs> um. Uh, yeah. I, that that that's the other thing is, I'm because I've only played it handheld. I'm struggling to see people, so I'm relying on the uh, on the on my allies highlighting people. Mm-hmm. But um, on Call of Duty, to tag something is the left bumper. But mm. on this one, it's the right bumper. And then Call of Duty, the right bumper throws the grenade. So I'm like, I'm pressing, I see an enemy and I'm like, I'm going to throw a grenade at him and I'm pressing this button and it just turn, puts a little red diamond above his head. I'm like, cool, that didn't hurt him. Yeah. <laughs> but at least everybody knows he's there. Yeah, that's that's real, that's got to be really difficult when you're so yeah. used to playing and then, another game. In a and then when I'm wanting to, trying to tag an enemy, I'm like pressing the bumper and it, it's not working. And then I get a mullet and I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> the, uh, the last the last game I played, we got it was totally my fault. Me and my friend, we were we were hidden, and I had a sniper rifle, and I was all excited because they like did not know where I was. And normally they're running or jumping, and I'm trying to shoot them with a sniper rifle, and I'm not good with movement. But this guy was just sitting there, and I was like, "Easy kill! I totally got this." You can't shoot through the glass on those on those. Um, like the little bays you can go into to get all the stuff. Yeah. I thought I would shoot through the glass. No, it's apparently bulletproof glass. So I'm like (sighs) aiming and all of a sudden I'm like, I like shoot three times and I'm like, nothing happened. What? But I can tell you what did happen. They all knew right where I was and we were all (laughs) murdered in like two seconds. They all ran right towards us and threw all kinds of grenades and all tactical stuff. And it was, yeah, I was like, well, sorry, that was on me. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, no, don't try to shoot through glass. That's my lesson. <laughs> yeah, see, that I didn't know that. So I'd have tried exactly the same. I'd have like <laughs> been stood there like trying to blast somebody through a glass screen and they're like, Well, why is the glass not broken? Why yeah. are you not down? <laughs> yeah, apparently it's bulletproof. That's all I can think. So but yeah, there's a lot of aspects to the game that I'm still yet to discover. Like um I was talking in a good shout out to a community member, Joe Valdez ninety two on Discord. Um he seems like if you want to play well, that we need to get him in the group. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like the legends all have, like if you have a different play style to pick a different legend. So I'm very hunter killer kind of person. So I'll I, loot up, get some bits and pieces. And then it is, I will actively try and find other players and hunt them down and go into close quarter style. So, I'm no good with a sniper rifle, so I will push forward and squeeze a team and try and take them out that way. And apparently I'm using the wrong legend for that. So mm-hmm. he's given me a list of legends to try and use to, to try and help my game style. So um yeah, that's I saw I that. Yeah, that, and I need to get better at that. And I that's a problem I have with these kind of games too. I like stick with one person for whatever reason. And yeah. uh, so I need to try out some other characters too and see what yeah. they think. I like I said I pick the robot because the rest of them are too like too sci-fi looking for me and then mm-hmm. I pick a robot which makes no sense. But I was I was I like, about to say uh, I don't understand. <laughs> but then I like the the like the player one ready player one looking like tapping yeah. the chest and it, oh. it just it makes me laugh. I like his voice so and whenever I thought of Apex Legends because I think he was one of the original legends, um, mm. it's who I automatically go to. So. He does the zip yeah. line too, right? That's his thing. Yeah, he does, which is quite useful for getting to higher places quickly. Mm-hmm. But... Yeah, I can imagine that. I like to use the 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 hunter person who can tell if people are coming or yeah, um, um, and see their tracks and stuff. It's not hunter, but it's uh, can't think of his name. He's the one with the bird or whatever it is. Yeah, or, yeah, I can't yeah. remember the name either. So, so. Um, he has he has been somewhat helpful when when Dwayne and I got to like top five he was helpful because the circle was getting smaller and he he I was able to use his thing to to realize where the people were so we instead of actually fighting because we knew we'd probably lose we kind of snuck around them to last a little bit longer until we finally had to get engage them and then we died uh, I'm just Mirage, not Mirage. Sorry, Mirage sends decoy. I'm just reading through his, um, yeah. 
Oh, Javal does his stuff. Yeah, I liked when he uh, when he told you the weapons. It was like alphabet soup. I was like, I was, I was, I was reading off all the acronyms. I was like, all right, yeah, but yeah, he definitely knows what he's talking about. That's for sure. Yeah, because so, there's, there's a whole aspect of loadouts as well. Like you can pick a loadout, and obviously you drop into the game and you're just bare fisted. So mm-hmm. you've got to find weapons, and then it's like that. Like he's given a lift of guns to try and use, so you can set a loadout, and I think you can pick that loadout up. I don't know how, I don't know where, because again, I'm still mm. learning. So, yeah. but that's usually like when I'm playing Call of Duty Warzone, I have like several loadouts depending on how I want to play the game or which game mode I'm playing. So, sure. and that's usually the the race to get the loadout before everybody else so you drop in your loot get cash by the loadout marker it drops in get your loadout and then like you've instantly got a massive advantage over everybody else on the map because you've got the gun that you like the, the skills that you like and stuff like that so mm-hmm. the only the only other thing i have to say about the game is um whenever you read about it about the switch version of the game or listen to anybody they always say turn off cross platform because um, you're playing in a, in a real disadvantage in the fact that uh, other players have a bigger field of vision and uh, they, the textures are clearer so they can see you from farther away. And so I thought, Oh, that, that's fair. You know I mean? I'm, if I'm, I'm good with losing, like I don't, I don't get upset in these games cause I know I stink. And so it's no big deal to me if I lose, but uh, I turned off cross platform and there's just not enough switch people playing with cross platform turned off to actually make a match, which seems crazy to me, but uh, yeah, I sat there forever and a day and never, never actually got into a match. So that's a bummer. Like, like I don't mind losing, but I'd like to know if I'm losing, I'm, I'm, we're on the same playing field, you know? So I know if I'm getting better, I guess is the thing. So yeah, I guess that's that. That's a that's a pet peeve of mine that I struggle with in this game. Cool. I, I could say I've got nothing else to add either. So, it, I mean, it's, I'm, there's a lot to learn, and mm, that's for sure. We'll probably hear about my learning curve in the next few episodes. So sounds good. Mine too, man. I'll keep playing for sure. We'll hook up at some point and get to get to be able to jump on a match together. Yeah, definitely. So. Um, for this episode, we've got some closing comments. Um, I want to give a mention to the Nintendo Bros. Nintendo Bros, sorry. I keep wanting to say Nintendo Bros, but it's Nintendo <laughs> Bros, Alex and Jake. Um, I reached, like, we reached out to each other on Instagram, uh, which is their handle for Instagram is at Nintendo Bros93. Um, they've got a Twitter account as well, which is at Nintendo Bros six um they're quite new i think they are nine episodes in now for a spot um for a podcast and they're over on spotify so if you want to listen to what those guys have been up to um head over there and, and give them a listen to they are both avid nintendo collectors so if you're a big fan of collecting nintendo items um go over there one of the two brothers i can't quite remember the name of the brother which brother is um is a big warzone fan and he's an animal crossing fan which is why i yeah. then said to them they should come and join us because we do an animal crossing podcast but and like um in bobby style um he kind of took us under his wing a little bit and i think uh, we got a lot of traction from people who listen to bobby and listen to us so i'm hoping that sure. any listeners that we've got we could take across to those guys because i know there's a lot of people that listen in our community that are big collectors of nintendo items so sure. and they're joining us on our next episode so i look forward to speaking to them both on here can't wait man can't wait so uh anything else that we want to add i am all good take us out cool ace dad crossing is a part of the nintendo dad's family of podcasts you can find new nintendo dad content wherever podcasts are found if you have any questions or comments you can reach out to us on twitter and instagram everything is at and dad crossing uh, we want to give the nintendo dads a big thank you for making all this craziness happen and from myself and nick happy one year anniversary to you and your island and all your islanders see you later guys bye now we'll go back
Thank you.